after a day of twisting arms and cutting deals, it all came down to a compromise over coal. How can anyone expect that developing countries can make promises about phasing out coal and fossil fuel subsidies? India and China were able to change the wording in the agreement from phase out unabated coal to phase down. I apologise for the way this process has unfolded um, and uh, I am deeply sorry. I also understand the, the deep disappointment. But I think, as you have noted, it's also vital that we um, protect this package. The move angered many delegates who had already made their own compromises. This commitment on coal had been a bright spot in this package. It was one of the things we were hoping to carry out of here and back home with pride. And it hurts deeply to see that bright spot dim. But the compromise meant the deal got through. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. It's like going from 24 karat gold to 18 karat gold, it's still gold. I mean, the fact that we are now making concrete steps forward on eliminating coal from uh, our energy uh, needs is quite substantial. I really do believe that as a result of this decision and as a result of the announcements that have been made over the course of the last two weeks, we are, in fact, closer than we have ever been before to avoiding climate chaos. Two of the key parts of the Glasgow Climate Pact have Australia in the frame. It's the first time a COP agreement has mentioned the phasing down of coal, and it's also asked nations to come back next year with increased emissions reductions targets, something Australia hasn't done since 2015. As the conference ended, many protesters and green groups were left feeling underwhelmed. On the whole, I think that this um, is it's a meek, weak outcome that doesn't meet the moment of the climate emergency. It keeps the 1.5 degree goal, you know, barely alive. And I don't think that the youth activists and the indigenous peoples are going to tolerate another cop like this. And it will be the young activists who will hold the leaders to account in the coming years for the pledges they just made. Steve Kinane, ABC News.